Let's get weird into it. Number eight, the pre-sleep nosedive. You're finally in bed. The day is over, your responsibilities have been temporarily muted, and you're drifting into that sweet, blissful state between wakefulness and dreamland. Your muscles relax, your breathing slows, and then, bam, for one heart-stopping second, you feel like you've just been shoved off a 10-story building. Your whole body convulses in a violent twitch. You might kick your leg out, and you're suddenly wide awake with your heart pounding like a drum solo. Congratulations, you've just experienced a hypnic jerk. This is your brain and body having a spectacular miscommunication during their nightly handover. As you fall asleep, your muscles are supposed to smoothly transition into a relaxed, paralyzed state called atonia. This is a good thing. It's what stops you from physically acting out your dream where you're fighting a giant squid with a pool noodle. But sometimes, your brain gets a little paranoid. It sees your muscles relaxing so quickly, your heart rate and breathing slowing down, and it panics. The primal, over-caffeinated lizard part of your brain shouts, Wait, are we falling? Are we dying? Abort, abort. It misinterprets the relaxation signals as a sign that you are, in fact, tumbling out of a tree like one of our less coordinated ancestors. In a desperate attempt to save you, it sends a massive jolt of electrical energy to your muscles to wake you up. So you jerk awake, safe in your bed, feeling like an idiot. Basically, your brain is a helicopter parent who can't handle you relaxing for even a second. Number seven, the solar sneeze. Ever walk out of a dark movie theater into the blinding afternoon sun and immediately feel your nose start to twitch? Before you can even register the light, you're letting out a sneeze so powerful it could launch a small bird into orbit. You haven't inhaled any dust. There's no pollen in the air. You just looked at a bright light and your face decided to have an explosive tantrum. This delightful quirk is called the photic sneeze reflex, or more amusingly, autosomal dominant compelling helioophthalmic outburst syndrome. Yes, the acronym is ACHU. Scientists with a sense of humor are the best kind of scientists. About one in four people have this trait, and it's all thanks to some wonderfully messy wiring in your head. The nerve that senses irritants in your nose, the trigeminal nerve, is located right next to the optic nerve, which carries visual information from your eyes to your brain. They're like two gossipy neighbors living in a duplex with paper-thin walls. Normally, they mind their own business. But when a sudden, bright light floods your optic nerve, the signal is so strong and overwhelming that it leaks over to the trigeminal nerve next door. Your trigeminal nerve, getting this sudden blast of confusing stimulation, does the only thing it knows how to do when it feels overwhelmed. It assumes there's an intruder in your nose. It yells, we have a foreign invader, and initiates the sneeze protocol. Your brain, bless its heart, doesn't double check the source. It just trusts the signal and fires the nasal cannons. It's a classic case of crossed wires, proving that even your nervous system can't resist a bit of juicy secondhand gossip. Number six, the ghost goose. Picture this. You're watching a movie and a particularly emotional swell of music kicks in. Or maybe you're standing in a quiet room and hear a floorboard creak upstairs. Suddenly, the skin on your arms and the back of your neck prickles up into a thousand tiny bumps. You're not cold, but there they are. Goosebumps. This is the piloerection reflex, and it's one of the most useless, yet oddly poetic relics of our evolutionary past. Every single hair on your body is attached to a tiny muscle called an erector pili. When you get cold or experience a strong emotion like fear, awe, or nostalgia, your brain sends a signal to these little muscles to contract. This yanks the hair follicle upright creating the bump we call a goosebump. For our ancient, furry ancestors, this was a brilliant party trick. If they were cold, puffing up their fur would trap a layer of air close to the skin, providing better insulation. If they were threatened by a predator, fluffing up their coat would make them look bigger, scarier, and less like an easy lunch. It was the biological equivalent of wearing a puffy jacket to a knife fight. But for you, a mostly hairless modern human, this reflex is completely pointless. You just look slightly more textured, your body is still running ancient software designed for a creature covered in a thick pelt of fur. So when that scary movie monster jumps out, your nervous system is screaming, puff up, look intimidating, while all you can manage is skin that briefly resembles a plucked chicken. Number five, the sympathy yawn. Nothing reveals the deep, primal, monkey-see-monkey-do nature of your brain quite like a yawn. You can be wide awake, fully caffeinated, and ready to run a marathon, but if you see someone else on the bus let out a big, satisfying yawn, it's over. You feel an unstoppable urge bubble up from the depths of your being. You fight it. You clench your jaw. You try to think about spreadsheets. 
but it's no use. You're going to yawn too. This is yawn contagion, and it's a bizarre form of involuntary social mirroring. Scientists are still debating exactly why this happens, but the leading theory is that it's tied to empathy and social bonding. Yawning is thought to be controlled by mirror neurons in your brain, the same neurons that fire when you wince because you saw someone else get a paper cut. These neurons help you understand and mimic the actions and feelings of others. When you see someone yawn, your mirror neurons light up and whisper to the rest of your brain, hey, that guy looks tired. Maybe we're tired too. We should probably do the tired face thing to show solidarity. It's an ancient, subconscious way of signaling that you're on the same page as your tribe. I, I see you are exhausted and possibly bored. I too am exhausted and possibly bored. Studies have shown that people with higher empathy scores are more susceptible to contagious yawning. So, the next time you can't resist a sympathy yawn, just tell yourself it's because you're a deeply compassionate and emotionally intelligent person. It's not because your brain has all the free will of a parrot. Number 4. The Human Airbag A car horn blares right next to you. A book falls off a shelf with a loud thud. Your roommate sneaks up behind you and yells your name. Before your conscious mind even has time to process what happened, your body has already reacted. Your shoulders fly up to your ears, your eyes slam shut. You might even let out a small, undignified shriek. This is the startle reflex, and it's your nervous system's lightning-fast defense mechanism against, well, everything. The signal for this reflex travels on a super short express lane neural pathway that goes from your ears directly to your brainstem and then out to your muscles, completely bypassing the slow, contemplative parts of your brain that are busy thinking about what to have for dinner. Your brain doesn't have time to ask, is that a falling book or a saber-toothed tiger? It just assumes it's the tiger and hits the panic button. The whole sequence, from the sound hitting your ear to you jumping out of your skin, takes less than a tenth of a second. It's an all-purpose duck-and-cover maneuver designed to protect your most vulnerable parts. Your eyes close to protect them from flying debris. Your neck muscles tense to guard your spinal cord, and your shoulders hunch to shield your vital organs. In a prehistoric world, this instantaneous reaction could be the difference between life and death. In the modern world, it's the difference between looking cool and collected versus spilling hot coffee all over yourself because a pigeon flew too close to your head. It's your inner caveman, alive and well, and he is very, very jumpy. Number three, the throat bouncer. You know that feeling. You're at the dentist and they're trying to take an x-ray of your back molars with a piece of plastic the size of a credit card. Or maybe you accidentally touch the back of your tongue with your toothbrush. Instantly, your throat clenches, your stomach lurches, and your entire body conspires to violently eject whatever is offending it. This is the gag reflex, or the pharyngeal reflex if you're feeling fancy. It's your body's last line of defense against choking. At the back of your throat, you have a set of highly sensitive nerves that act as a bouncer for your esophagus. Their job is to stand there with their arms crossed, deciding what gets to go down the hatch. Food and drink that you swallow normally, they get the VIP pass. But anything unexpected that touches that area, a dental instrument, a stray finger, a piece of food that's too big, and the bouncer goes into full-on panic mode. The signal fires to your brainstem, which immediately initiates a powerful and coordinated muscular contraction. Your soft palate rises to seal off your nasal passages, and the muscles in your throat constrict in a powerful wave, pushing the object forward and away from your airway. It's an incredibly effective, albeit deeply unpleasant, safety feature. The sensitivity of this reflex varies wildly from person to person. Some people can have a dentist rummaging around back there with no issue, while others will gag if the wind blows in the wrong direction. It's just your body's way of saying, I don't know what that is and I don't care to find out. Get it out. Now. Number 2. The Emergency Shutdown Some people can watch gory horror movies or medical dramas without flinching. And then there are others, the kind of people who see a single drop of blood from a paper cut and suddenly feel the room start to spin. Their hearing gets muffled like they're underwater, and the world gracefully fades to black. If this is you, you've met the vasovagal syncope. This is not a sign of weakness. It's a sign that your nervous system is a massive drama queen. This reflex is a massive overreaction by the vagus nerve, one of the longest nerves in your body that helps regulate things like heart rate and blood pressure. When faced with a trigger, like the sight of blood, extreme emotional distress, or even just standing for too long, the vagus nerve gets flustered and hits the wrong buttons. Instead of keeping your blood pressure stable, it suddenly tells your heart to slow way down and your blood vessels to dilate, especially in your legs. 
This causes a sudden, catastrophic drop in your blood pressure. Your brain, which is a massive energy hog, is the first to notice the dip in its blood supply. It panics and decides the only logical course of action is to initiate a full system shutdown to conserve resources. Fainting is its way of forcing your body to become horizontal, so gravity can help the blood flow back to your head more easily. It's an extreme self-preservation reboot sequence triggered by something as harmless as a needle. Your body isn't scared. It's just so committed to safety that it would rather knock you unconscious than deal with the stress. Number 1. The Brainless Kick You're sitting at the doctor's office, perched on the edge of that crinkly paper, legs dangling. The doctor pulls out that little rubber hammer, and you know what's coming. They give your knee a gentle tap right below the kneecap, and against your will, your lower leg kicks out with the enthusiasm of a rocket. You can try to stop it. You can clench every muscle in your body and concentrate on keeping your legs still. But it doesn't matter. That leg is going to kick. This is the patellar reflex, the classic knee jerk. And it's beautiful, because it proves you don't even need your brain for some things. This reflex is a monosynaptic reflex arc, which is a fancy way of saying it's a two-neuron shortcut that completely bypasses the conscious part of your brain. When the doctor's hammer strikes your patellar tendon, it stretches the quadriceps muscle on the front of your thigh. A sensory neuron in that muscle detects the stretch and sends a signal screaming up a nerve fiber directly to your spinal cord. Now here's the magic. Instead of bothering to send that message all the way up to your brain for a lengthy committee meeting, the spinal cord takes matters into its own hands. The sensory neuron hands the message off directly to a motor neuron right there in the spine. This motor neuron immediately fires a signal back down to your quadriceps, telling it to contract and kick your leg out to counteract the stretch. The entire round trip happens in milliseconds, long before your brain even gets the memo that its leg just did a dance move without permission. It's a simple, elegant system designed to maintain posture and balance, and it's a humbling reminder that sometimes, your spine thinks your brain is just too slow for the important stuff. That's all for today. I'll be making similar videos in the future. Subscribe to see them.